With the end of round 13 comes the halfway point of the season. And I thought it would be a good time to do an overall recap and an overall grade of every team's first half from here on out. Now, um, for this video, I'm going to do the first half of teams. So this will be split into two videos. This is a part one of it. Part two will come out probably around about tomorrow morning. So watch out for that, okay? And don't worry, we also will have the recap of tonight's Brisbane St. Kilda game ready to go as well. So pay attention to that. And yeah, we'll um, get into this. Starting off, we have the Adelaide Crows. Now, um, what I thought about, um, I predicted would be in the finals for this season. And... Yeah, it's just been a seriously disappointing season for them. They are currently 15th on the ladder. Uh, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, the Crows are 15th um, at the moment on the ladder with four wins, eight losses, and one draw coming against the Brisbane Lions. And overall, like, I, I thought they would make finals this year, so that is just so disappointing to see in so many ways. Like, I really thought this team was going to be way better than um, what they were, and I just think they've gone backwards in so many categories. Like, for a team that missed the finals only because of a false umpiring decision, an incorrect umpiring decision last year, we all thought they were going to make that next jump that next jump and become a legitimate contender. Well, maybe not a contender, but finally qualify for the finals for the first time since 2017. But they just haven't, and this has been one of the most disappointing Ally Crow seasons I've seen in my life. And I've talked to fans, they are fed up at the moment. Absolutely fed up with how the Crows are going. So, um, yeah, it's just been absolutely um. Yeah, they've got a lot of work to do. I think their defense have regressed a lot. Their, their forward scoring capacity has not been nearly as strong. Like, Tex Walker. Like, this year is showing just how much they relied on Tex Walker to score. And they just haven't been doing that this year. And I think so many of their forward line players are just in terrible form. And I think, and there's a reason why O'Brien was dropped to the twos last week before Richmond. He's having such a off season as well. So yeah, the Crows just, I don't know, something's just not right with them at the moment. And um, yeah, for their overall grade, I'm giving them an E minus. E like it's not truly a fail. If it weren't for that like big win against Carlton, but that's the one thing that's not going to be a foul because the show that they might be able to do it but like yeah it's just been rough like nothing's gone to right for, right for a team that we thought was going to make a jump moving on um the, the brisbane lions are up next a team that was four points away from winning a premiership last year and almost and was my tip in the preseason to win the minor premiership overall well they've regressed They've regressed a little bit, but it's actually not that much if you look at the stats. Like, despite their ladder position, 13th, if you look at the stats, their um, overall um, ladder position is actually, should be one of the um, better of the, ga of the game. Like, when it comes to stats, like, scores from turnover, like, defensive pressure, mid defensive pressure, um, tackle efficiency, so many stats that decide the, the premier of the year. Brisbane is actually doing really well on them. It's, they're not that far off it, believe it or not. But the thing that's been leading them down this year has been the four line. They, I think, are the team that has lost the most games through inaccurate kicking this year, and that hasn't been a problem for them normally, but just... They've lost so many games off an accurate kicking game. 
bad kicking is bad football and bad kicking is the reason they're out of the eight at the moment. We know that they are a good team. I am not counting them out of making a run late. We know they're a good team. They showed it against Melbourne early in the season and showed it against the Bulldogs last week. They can dominate you if you look if you look at them lightly. But they just haven't shown that at so many points this season. And for a team that I predicted would win the minor premiership, it's it's been rough. But they certainly are out of there. I'm giving them a D minus because they were expected to be way, way better than this at the moment. But because of like the ability that they could come back up the standings very soon if they um, string some wins together, and they've got a lot of games at the Gabba to be able to do that, then I think there's um, not, not panic yet for Brisbane, but like definitely hasn't been what they planned so far. Now, um, going on to Carlton, um, unlike Brisbane and um, Adelaide, who I think have had, like, probably not campaigns I'd say, like, we expected of them, Carlton have been amazing. Carlton have just been amazing in season 2024. Like, they had a little stretch in the middle where, like, I feel like injuries really got them and caused them to struggle. But other than that, like, their general profile is one of a premiership contender. They've got, I think, the most lethal forward line in the game in Charlie Kono and Harry Mackay, a top three, not top ten, a top three midfield. And I reckon their defense is getting more and more seriously underrated. Michael Voss has been coaching incredible this year. And it just the resurgence of Carlton we saw at the end of last year has been continuing throughout 2024. They are second on the ladder, and they are just... I think they're definitely, as I said last video, the true main threat to Sydney at the moment. Of course, all of that can change, but um, I, I think they've done this perfectly. They've played so well this year. They've, this campaign has been really strong at the moment. I'm giving them an A. Because, like, for so many other teams, they... They've struggled to keep up with the expectations we put on them in the off-season. Carlton have risen up those expectations. And if they keep this up, it could be a good September ahead. Now, um, now onto the um, reigning premiers, Collingwood. And at the beginning of the season, as we um, so... Um, Durabri um, described during this channel, uh, they were not playing like the reigning premiers. That tag was off them for a little bit because they were just not threatening at all. They looked like they drunk their own bath water, or they they got into it too, too much. But after that, they've been really strong. They've been quietly a form team of the competition. As after that own free start, the only loss they've had is the Western Bulldogs. Other than that, it's just two draws, and draws are not losses. They're not wins, but they're not losses as well. And I think their ability to still win in the clutch is just still there. But the big thing this season has been the injuries. They've had, I think, the, they are the winners of the injury cup at the moment. Yet despite that, they're almost in a top four position. I know that this would kill many other teams that injuries have had, but for Collingwood, with their phenomenal system, it's just been a next man up type of thing. And it's and to come out of the most brutal stretch of this with a competitive draw v Frio, a tight loss with the Bulldogs, and a demolition of Melbourne is just phenomenal. Just absolutely phenomenal. And I think um all crap the crap craze. He's the wizard, as I call, as I like to call him. The wizard is just doing his work again. And um, Nick Dacos has just been absolutely phenomenal. So I think he's winning the brown light. I think he's my brown light prediction at the moment. And I just think their system is in place for another run. Ultimately, I put them at um, my grade. I gave them was a um, B. Minus. I gave them a B minus. Not a plus yet, because I feel like they can still improve better. But a B minus I'm giving them. 
because with their injuries, to be in six at the moment is a very strong achievement. All right, um, next team um, is Essendon, and <laughs> this is the team I got the most wrong in the off, in the off season. I'll say it. I thought they were going to be bad, but they have been. They have truly amazed me, and they've truly been way better than I thought they were going to be. They're third at the moment, but they've sat second for pretty much most of the entire first half of the season. They've got two losses in a row at the moment, but that was the Suns at home and Carlton, who we've already said has been playing incredible. But like, the way Brad Scott has re-energized this team and put them in such a good place to make a run at it this season has just been incredible to see. And it's just been one of the reasons as to why they've been um, so good and been able to perform so well. Like their midfield has been um, absolute, has been much better. Like Todd Goldstein has been a quietly amazing pickup this off season. Yeah, overall, um, their defense I think has a little bit to work on, but has been um, impressive as well. And I've been impressed by their forward capacity. Like, like Kyle Langford has been and Jai Caldwell have been really strong on the forward line and have given them scoring power for that have got Bolton fans really excited and like how Bolton fans are getting excited about their team again and like showing up to crap to games has been phenomenal to see as well so um yeah um I've given them a, 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 I've given them a name like the way they've done this season has just been absolutely incredible and I don't not think you could have formed this or planned this better if you were Brad Scott. Next team is um, the Fremantle Dockers who I've, I've liked watching them. I, they're a good team. They're a really good team. There's a, there's a bit of talk in the moment of are they a contender? Like can they win the flag? And I think it'd be disrespectful to say that they cannot be considered in that conversation. They definitely am in that conversation more than other teams at the moment. I think they've just... The big thing for them is that they've become exciting. Whereas, like, I feel like in 2023 they were one of the worst teams to watch easily. They were just a dour watch. And there was a reason why so many didn't want to see Justin Longmere come back. Which is weird because he's not from a defensive system. He's not from a Paul Roos or a Lost Line system. He's from he's from Collingwood, who normally are just score like a fun scoring system. But this year, I feel like he's integrated that instead of falling into the traps that say a Ross Line or Simon Goodwin has fallen into. So um, yeah, that's um, been from all I was saying. They've just been a fun watch. They're, fun, they're full of enthusiasm, and like they met the finals, I cannot wait to see them again. Luke Jackson continues to be a phenomenal pickup in the ruck, and has been playing phenomenal on the ruck. Jai Amis, despite like a few inaccuracy troubles in May, has relatively been the same as well. Caleb Sarong has just been a magnet in the midfield. In the, like, I think he still has the best performance of the year with that 46 disposal performance against Brisbane. And their, their defense has arguably been the best in the game, led by Alex Pierce and Luke Ryan, who was having another phenomenal season. So yeah, um, if I were in Western Australia, I'd be having a lot more talk about this purple squad because they've been playing really well. I've given them a, a B pass. Nearly an A, but I decided I think with inaccuracy, there's maybe one or two more things they could work on, so it's a B plus for me. But they've had an incredible season. If they keep this up, they'll play finals. Alright, next up is the Geelong Cats, who started off on five. If we did this video after week seven, it'd be an A plus. They were the hot team to begin this competition with a 7 and 0 start. And it really had me thinking. Oh god, we're gonna see another Cats Premiership. But they've cooled down since. They've definitely cooled down since. I think they've been brought back to the pack. They actually had a four game losing streak, which was the worst losing streak I've seen. And yeah, I guess there's a lot of question, a lot of concern about who is the real Geelong this year. The team that starred 7 0 and was taking names, 
or the team that lost four games in a row for the first time under Chris Scott. Which is the real Geelong this year? I think it's a mixture of both, honestly. I think their defence has been relatively stellar. Tom Hawkins, Jeremy Cameron are still been playing so well for them, but their midfield is a legitimate concern. If they are going to keep this phenomenal stretch of staying up the top for this long that we all envy up, they need to recruit for midfielders because that is an Achilles heel at the moment. And I feel like that's where they could be get gone in finals. That's my personal opinion, but for what Chris Scott has done, especially in the first half, it's been really strong. They're a team to watch in the second half because I think they could get a run on and be very scary in the long term. And I think they're a team that you like definitely have to watch out for in this second half of the season. I've given them a B plus. I think they've cooled down obviously a bit from their very hot start to have them at A plus, but they're still having a good team and I think they're gonna go back to the finals this year. Anyway, next team is the um, Gold Coast Suns, who I think the big story for their season, I think that this has been the best season they've had since the Rodney E days. Since Gary Abba Jr. was like the best player I've ever seen. Like him in 2013 is still the best player I've ever seen in general. And like, it just feels like this might be the best Suns team in history. They are young, but they are, they are fiery. Like, they can definitely get on a roll and be super exciting when the time comes. I feel like their midfield's been very strong. I think Jared Witts is still incredibly underrated as a Rockman. Ben King's season has been one of my favourite parts about this year. She's been an avid, incredible goal scorer, and he's curry tied with the Coleman. He might be losing by two to Charlie Kerno at the moment, but... He's just been phenomenal as well. And um, yeah, their defense has been um, quietly underrated. I guess the problem um, for me in Harbuck's first year is that whilst they're finally making People's First Stadium, not Metricon, People's First Stadium, a uh, um, fortress, they, their, their road record is just terrible. And last week they played one of the worst games, their worst game of the year. In a game they just had to win face and kill that. And, and I think everyone's not taking them seriously for that reason. Until they win a big road game, that's when we'll take them seriously. Overall, for what the Suns have done, I think a B plus. Like, I think this has exceeded expectations, but they're definitely within the point to make their first finals ever. And I kinda hope they do. It's long overdue for them to finally make the finals. All right, next team is um, the Greater Western Sydney Giants. My preseason premiers, and whilst they started off really, really well, they started off exactly what I thought they would. They've kind of almost like gone, gone back down to earth in the last couple of weeks. Like, I feel like they they're definitely like show signs, but there's just parts of their game they are going to have to improve if they hit that level before that we could hit, and I truly believe that. Like, I feel like Toby Green is not having as good of a season as we usually expect him to have. I feel like their midfield could definitely improve, and I feel like they're missing players like Kuniguya quite a lot, and Sam Taylor missing a few games definitely hurt them. And Look, it's definitely there for them to fix, and they are still in the eight. They're in eight at the moment, but they are still in the eight. But yeah, a lot of um, problems there. But yeah, um, little, just little seeping issues have come up in the last few weeks that they're going to need to fix if they're um, going to be a um, legitimate contender in the um, finals coming up. I've given them a. A B minus. Yeah, B minus. That sounds good. As I still feel like they're good. They're doing what they strive to achieve. There's just little stuff in their game that they're probably going to need to work out if they are going to be able to, to, to be able to do the coming seasons. I mean, the coming um, weeks ahead, which I thought they were going to be, is I thought they were going to win the premiership. And finally, the last team of this video, and I've said the best to last, 
Hawthorne. What I mean by I've saved the best to last is that this is my favourite team to watch out of any team this year. First half of the season, far from it, they'd get an F for their first half. First five games, they get an F. They were terrible. Absolutely terrible. And you just wondered whether Sam Mitchell was actually the right guy. But this is why we stuck with him. This is why we truly believe Sam Mitchell is a phenomenal coach. How they've been playing the last few weeks has just been incredible to watch. And like, everyone just says, what's their Fox footy team of the year? The team that when they come on Fox footy, they cannot miss any game they play. Hawthorne is that for me. The Rascal Pack, as they call them, has just been incredible. Jack Itterman has... He's been an incredible pickup for them. He's been an incredible pickup, and I think he's really, like, adapted to this club and embraced their identity so well. Which is not surprising, because Hawthorne as a kid. I feel like also, like, they've just gone better as the same goes on their midfield. It's gone way better. Their defence, James Sicily leading it has just gone way better as the season's gone on and I just think the overall player style the run for player style letting the rascal pack as they call them do their own thing has just been incredible to see and it's going to be so exciting in the second half to see what they can do with this um, momentum that they have overall from how they've been able to come back from an 0-5 start to one game outside the 8 I have to give them an A minus. Not an A plus. An A plus is for when like literally everything has gone to plan and they start 0 and 5. But an A minus is a perfect rank for them with how their season started. So yeah, um, that's in general um, a rundown of um, an overall grade for every team aim for the first half of the year and part two coming out tomorrow.